In this video, I'm going to take this glass tank and this piece of cork bark and turn it into a stunning tree trunk terrarium for this beautiful praying mantis. Let's get straight into the build, it's going to be a good one. I'm going to use this tank here which I made out of scrap glass from an old fish tank. I made sure to install a vent on the top for circulation and I'll be installing the door a bit later on. As for the lighting, I'm going to use this 15 watt LED jungle dawn light. I placed on a few bits of blue tack just to make sure it doesn't slide off throughout the build. Now I'm going to get straight into the build starting with the drainage layer which will go at the bottom of the tank. For this terrarium I'm going to use Lika. It's lightweight and porous making it perfect for terrarium drainage. In case you didn't know, the purpose of a drainage layer is to serve a place for excess water to sit instead of it sitting in the substrate. For a terrarium this size, it's essential that a drainage layer is put in place. You haven't got to use Lika and you can use any small size rocks or stones or even some filter foam. After pouring in a generous amount, I'm flattening it out to make sure there's no high or low points. A layer 2 to 3 inches thick will work just fine for this tank. Next, I'm going to place some window screen mesh on top of the leaker to stop the substrate from getting into the drainage layer. This is known as a substrate barrier, and I like to use window screen mesh as it's relatively cheap to get hold of and works really well. Now it's time to get the substrate in. I'm using my usual terrarium substrate mix, which I'll put up on screen now. It holds moisture, is resistant to compression, provides nutrients for the plants, and it's well draining. These are all key characteristics of a quality terrarium substrate. After a base layer of substrates in and gently patted down, it's time to look at the hardscape. I've got this amazing piece of cork bark, which I want to use to create a tree trunk in the tank. My idea is to have it sitting in the center of the tank with moss and climbing plants growing all over it. I haven't really seen this being done before and I think it would be a great way to recreate a slice of nature. However, the only problem is, is that the trunk simply takes up too much space to the point where I'm worried that the praying mantis won't have enough room once it's fully grown. To fix this, what I'm going to do is cut a tapered section off the back of the cork bark. I made a couple measurements and then started cutting it down with a saw. With the taper cut out, you can now see how it sits in the tank. As you can see, it sits nice and flush with the glass and there's much more room for the mantis. One problem is that it's not stable and it needs to be attached in place. To secure it to the glass, the best material to use is going to be this aquarium grade silicone. I'm going to apply it all along the back side of the cork bark. With the silicone ready, I'm going to pick the tank back up and attach the cork bark into place. I took some time to line it up before pressing it in to make sure it was right in the centre. Once I was happy, I firmly pressed it up against the glass and left it to dry for 24 hours. 24 hours later and the cork bark is super secure. Whilst the silicone was drying, I took the time to paint the back piece of glass black. But more importantly, I left the centre of the hollow trunk visible so I can see what's going on inside. I think this will serve as a nice hideout for the mantis which it can access it through the top of the cork bark trunk. With the trunk in and secured I'm now going to add some more substrate to the base. I was trying to slope it up towards the back but it was quite awkward getting it through the small gaps. As you can see there's a good amount of substrate in which the plants will be grateful for. I do want to add a bit more texture and detail on the trunk with a few bits of spiderwood. I took some time to experiment with multiple different pieces before securing any in place. Once I was happy, I used some gel type super glue to lock the spiderwood in place. I only ended up adding a few pieces as I still want the main focus to be on the cork bark trunk. I'm really liking how it's looking but it's about to look even better as it's time to add some moss. This is fern moss and I think it would be ideal for this style terrarium. Before planting the fern moss, I'm going to place in some sphagnum moss. I'm doing this as sphagnum moss is great at retaining moisture. I'm then planting the fern moss on top of the sphagnum moss. The fern moss will wick up moisture which will aid in its growth. I'm repeating the same process in various locations throughout the cork bark trunk. Now the moss is in, I'm going to give it a good spray down to keep it nice and damp. Now it's time for some more plants. I've got some different climbing plants which all range in different leaf shapes, size and texture. 
Together, I'm hoping these will help create a natural looking scape. I'm gonna start with this Solanum Ecuador. It's a fast growing climbing plant with these beautiful small brown tinted leaves. I'm gonna show you a quick tip as to how you can hold climbing plants in place. These are stainless steel staples. I'm using some pliers to straighten them out. I'm then cutting off a section at the end to create a sharp point and then bending it in half. Here's the result and it's super useful for pinning plants into things like cork bark. I'm pressing a few in to hold the solanum in place. With time, the climbing plant will root itself onto the cork bark, but they're super useful at the start. Next, I'm gonna plant a couple different species of McGravia. Once again, this is a climbing plant that I think will look really nice growing up the cork bark trunk. The leaves towards the top are a bit pale as it was growing right at the top of a propagation tub. I didn't need to pin this piece down as it fit quite nicely underneath the spiderwood. Now I'm gonna go ahead planting a few more species and pinning them in place where necessary. I want to plant this Ficus quercifolia in the moss at the top of the tank. This plant has some really nice small dark green leaves and it should hopefully trail and climb over the cork bark. I pinned it in place and then gave the whole tank a light spray down. I'm really liking how the tank's looking so far, but it's not done yet. To create an even more natural looking tank, I'm gonna add in some botanicals. I've got some twisted seed pods and some Indian almond leaves. I'm gonna do a few things to prepare them before placing them in the tank. I'm starting by taking the leaves and breaking them up into smaller pieces. Next, I'm gonna pour in some water, make sure they're all submersed and then put them in the microwave for a couple minutes. I like to do this as it helps them sit much more naturally right away. I'm starting with the Indian almond leaves and not thinking about their placement too much and just covering up the substrate. I'll put the rest of the botanicals in later, but for now I wanna plant some ferns. I've got two tricolor ferns and I think they'll look great in the foreground either side of the trunk. These ferns have leaves which are in shades of green, bronze and red. I use some tweezers to dig a hole into the substrate and then plant the fern inside. Now I'm gonna go ahead and place in the rest of the botanicals. Once again, these can be placed in pretty much randomly. I really like these twisted seed pods and think they add some nice detail to the bottom of the tank. As you've probably noticed, this tank doesn't actually have a door yet, but I'm gonna fix that now. I cut this glass to size off camera and I'm taping it down to keep it in place. Next, I'm adding some more tape to keep the front side clear of silicone. I'm then applying aquarium grade silicone along the side of the tank where the two pieces meet. I'm then spreading it out with my finger before using a flat edge to get a nice clean finish. The tape can then be removed and the silicone left to dry for 24 hours. Once the silicone is dried, it creates a really nice hinge which is both durable and seamless. Now it's time to start adding some life. I'm gonna start off with springtails. These are tiny hexapods which will feed on things like mold and decaying matter. They process this food and then poop it out in the form of fertilizer for the plants. You've never got to worry about springtails overpopulating the tank as their population will self-regulate depending on available food. They'll spend the majority of their time in and amongst the leaf litter and substrate. Next, I'm gonna add another species of microfauna but one that's slightly larger. I've got a good number of these beautiful isopods which I've taken out another terrarium. These isopods will play a similar role to the springtails as they'll feed on things like decaying matter. The key difference is that they're large enough to become a source of food for the praying mantis. As soon as I put them in, they all scurried down into the leaf litter. Before introducing the mantis, I'm gonna give the terrarium a good spray down and then let the plants and microfauna establish for about a month or so. Four weeks have passed and this tree trunk terrarium is doing really well. The plants haven't grown a whole bunch as they do grow on the slower side and take a little bit of time to get established first. The only exception to this is the Solanum Ecuador and as you can see it's grown quite significantly. I've been really enjoying this tank so far but it's about to get a lot better as it's time to add the mantis. This here is a female giant Asian mantis. 
She's only about two inches at the moment, but she should get to about three and a half once she's fully matured. I let her slowly climb herself from the tissue into the tank. At this point, I put the camera down and let her settle in for a week. One week later, and I'm glad to say that the mantis has settled in really well and I've even started handling her. One thing's for sure is that she needs a name, so if you've got any suggestions, drop them in the comments below. Without a doubt, the best thing about keeping a mantis is watching them catch their prey. For the time being, I've been hand feeding just to make sure she's eating. It's crazy to see just how quick and precise they are. Once again, I'm really not sure on a name, so I'm definitely going to need your help. I'm really happy with how this terrarium turned out and it's only going to get better as the plants establish and grow. I really hope you enjoyed this build and if you did, be sure to give it a like and why not subscribe so you don't miss any future builds or updates. As always, thank you for watching.